Fox. Lou, good afternoon. How we doing, boys? Hey! There well, he is. Well, Lou, I uh, <laughs> I feel like with this whole Theo Epstein yeah. news, I, I go back to a line from the legend Judge Judy. Don't pee on my shoes and tell me that it's raining. Meaning, it's uh, Theo is back, but he's back for the Fenway portfolio. Yeah. Not just the Red Sox, but I feel like some people are taking the cheese and thinking, oh my God, Theo is back to have this giant role with the Red Sox. Where do you land on all this, Lou? Well, I mean, um, I don't think he's being brought back to advise on Liverpool. Or the Penguins, you know? I mean, if Kraft brought in Belichick, what's he going to do? His other company? You know what I mean? So, um, and that's honestly without the assumption of exactly what this role is. But I know how much he cares about the Boston Red Sox. And uh, I think he's going to be involved in the Red Sox issues. You know, I'm sure there'll be other things that he'll, he'll be helping them out with as well. But from the moment they hired Craig Breslow, and I think Craig Breslow, I think, can handle the job and he'll be good. But we've always wondered, where's the senior advisor? You know, you can't put a price on experience. Uh, I'm sure his head's spinning a little bit here, even just in his first off season as the general manager or controlling guy for the organization. So I know much Theo cares about this organization. I find it hard to believe Fenway Sports Group is bringing Theo Epstein in to deal with the PGA or NASCAR. I think it is going to be an influence and advisor role for the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you, Lou, I think with Theo's sort of front office experience, yep. At the corporate level with MLB, lines him up perfectly to be able to help with those other brands. Because he's had, that would be the equivalent of corporate level experience, which to me is, uh, according to the, like this article in Sportico and some of the stuff that Sam Kennedy said in there, which we can kind of unpack a little bit, yep. that I wonder if that's where, okay, Theo has seen sort of the sports world through a different light through the commissioner's office. Yeah, and, and I'm sure that is part of it. He's sort of broadening you know, his experiences and seeing other corporations and how they run in other industries. Um, but he's he's here to help. He, he's, he's, he's here to advise in this role. He and Theo, uh, he and Craig have a, a very good relationship. Theo played a role in Craig even being hired, or at least um, speaking about him. And and I think even if Theo wasn't part of this Fenway Sports Group, I still think he'd have Craig's ear at some point, just the ins and outs as a friend. And I find it hard to believe that that connection will not be happening here as well. So, Lou, how do you think uh, Alex Cora is feeling about everything that's going on? Well, I think he realizes nothing's really changed. Um, I think he's going to go out there and he kind of realizes the situation. It's his last year of his deal. doesn't seem like anyone's in a rush to give him an extension, including himself. Uh, he's going to look at it as, as just like last year. He's going to try to go out there and, and compete and, and try to you know play good baseball, but at the same point realize there's going to be nights where he's just too thin, uh, that people are going to be screaming and yelling at him down a run or two in the sixth inning when he brings in a certain guy and that lead, uh, the deficit's going to jump to four or five. He's not throwing games. It's just a reality that he just doesn't have enough. He's back to platooning certain guys in, in the outfield. He's back to, you're going to hear more pockets in the fifth and sixth inning. You know, that's the beauty of last year. You didn't hear any pockets in the eighth and ninth. You knew who it was because that's what you do when you have studs. When you don't have studs, you start hearing pockets. You start hearing platoons. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think it's just the reality was sort of setting in. You know, at the end of the year, Christian, he for like a week or two, he kept telling the media about how in spring training they're going to build a roster where they're going to make tough decisions. Right, guys that are up here that have had time in the big leagues are going to be in AAA because they need that depth. I don't know if he's going to have the ability to do that. That depth that I think he was expecting in AAA, I think is going to be on their roster you know, here in the big leagues. I mean, too you, early, it, right? Before yeah. they're ready. Yeah, no, it's, it's like they may be ready, but they should be in AAA in case something inevitably happens during the season. I mean, you replaced Justin Turner and you replaced Adam Duvall with Tyler O'Neill and Bobby Dahlbeck. Like, I just. <laughs> It's just the reality of it. So you roll the balls out there and you do your best. Lou, it, e even if the Red Sox said, all right, fine, let's find $30 million, let's try to shut fans up, and you bring back, say, J.D. Martinez and you sign Jordan Montgomery. Yeah. Does that make this team better? Of course. I mean, like that much better that it's going to matter and, you know, it'll be winning record matter. Yes, 
Really? Yes, because what it does is Jordan Montgomery now gives you innings. And with Bayo and, and Giolito, I don't know how quality they're going to be, but there's going to be innings there. And Pavetta, he can give you innings. You know, and Crawford, is if he's your fifth, but what it does is it now puts Gar- uh, Garrett Whitlock and Tanner Houck in the bullpen where maybe they should be instead of competing for this fifth spot. You know, there's just – there's back to the too many questions. And if you end up keeping, you know, Martin and Jansen – now, all of a sudden, you, you've got a bullpen. You've got pitching. We've seen it before. Baltimore, you know, or other teams, you know, Baltimore actually started swinging it last year. But we've seen teams with pitching kind of carry it. I think they'll score runs. I think it does make a difference. Or at least what it does, Gresh, it puts you in a conversation for that wild card. Right now, I don't think anyone is going to predict them to be in that conversation right now. Um, talking to Lou Maloney and Lou, uh, um, <clears throat> curious, how much do you think it bugs the Red Sox that nobody believes anything that they say? Well, a lot of this they're doing, um, because the actions afterwards, you know, and we spent so much time on full throttle, you know, uh, Tom Werner's comment that we sort of forgot the fact that top to bottom from the manager to ownership, to GM, to whatever, they kept talking about how they got, they starting pitching is the most important thing this off season. You know, we need to go out and get two starters. Last I checked, they've lost Sale and Paxton and added Giolito. So, and, and they're trying to convince us that what they have now is enough. Well, you didn't think that three months ago. What's changed? You know, the, it, it goes back. Like, people know, you know, like the whole Xander thing and top priority and, and you know, it just it, it's up and down. So a lot of that is their own, you know, doing. So you, you start making public comments and we hold you to them. You know, full throttle, let's go. You know, you need two starters. Let's go. When Dave Dombrowski did that, I need an ace and a closer. He signed David Price, and a week later traded for Craig Kimbrell. That, that's okay, good. You told us you did it. Perfect. Beautiful. But when you say you need two starters and you're going to make tough decisions and guys in this roster, the fringe guys, are going to be in AAA, and I don't know if you can afford to do that anymore, then you start wondering what happened. And, and it's really a very confusing situation for people. I know fans are pissed off, but even baseball people are like, I don't get it. Yeah, and I'm curious how Core is going to spin this because I think he's like, in, in, as far as managers, coaches go, I feel like he is a master of the spin. Yeah, you know, like how he kind of answers the questions, and and I can understand him answering and spinning it in you know M- M- June, May, or June, but but when, when the trucks roll out of Fenway Park on February 5th. I don't know if he can, you know, start off spinning. Maybe he's got points. When they sell, he'll get a chunk and won't have to worry about it. <laughs> I don't know. But he's going to be uh, doing a lot of tap dancing, I think, Lou. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree because you go into it knowing you're a little bit thin, and especially now with the Orioles maybe becoming with new ownership. They already made one move with Burns, and they're probably going to extend him, and they've got the minor league system, and the scariest thing was the Orioles actually starting to spend money, which is what they may be starting to do. It's, it's very unsettling, you know, and um, I think you will – Cora will put a spin on it. And the thing is, is like it's sort of like last year. There are good players, right? Like they're 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 like I said before, there a lot of good things happened last year with Casas and Bayo and even Duran and, and and other things. The back end of the bullpen was absolutely lights out. You got enough out of that catching position. So you've got good players, but much like last year when everybody plays with a twenty six man roster, you were playing with a twenty two man roster. Most teams have a five man rotation. You had three. You know, like it was just not enough. And I think you're almost in that same boat as of right now. We'll see. Lou Maloney with us, as he will be each and every Friday during the uh, baseball season. Uh, Down in Baltimore, the Angeloses have sold their uh, franchise. $173 million buy-in, $1.72 billion (laughs) on the way out the door. So it's a 100-win team with now a motivated owner who on day one went and made a trade. Scary. How, how bad How bad a news is this for us? This is always the scariest thing for every team in the American League East because I remember even like last offseason saying, you know, that what are they doing? You know, they, they their young kids came through. You know, they're a great club two years ago, and they did absolutely nothing in the offseason. You know, they didn't go out and try a guy like Verlander and Scherzer and things like that. That's what they needed. And now you've got these great young players and even more coming. And I'm always like, why don't they just maybe dive in a little bit of their prospects, right? And go out and trade for that ace or or be on, in, on Yamamoto. Why don't they start spending? And now that they are with their farm system, like, watch out. Like, that team won 105 games, whatever it was, last year and didn't spend a dime. 
You know, like little tiny bad moves. They start spending money, look out. Lou, is it is it fair to say Baltimore and Atlanta could rule Major League Baseball through the end of this decade? Is that an overstatement? No, I don't think it is. I, I don't think you should discount the Dodgers either, um, although we'll see how that plays out. Um, but still, it's like it, that's exactly what you're talking about because there was concern in Baltimore saying, okay, we've got all these great young studs. Like every, How many rookies of the year are we going to have? How many number one prospects in a row are we going to have? The problem is, is Angelos ever going to extend these guys? They're going to let them walk. And now I think you, you're kind of going to have your answer. I think they're going to get that top of the rotation. They already got it in Burns. I think they will extend him. I think you will see extensions for these great young players they have, and they're not going anywhere. Uh, Lou, uh, I don't know if I'm catching you off guard with this one, but I just saw yeah. it. Who is Romy Gonzalez? Triple A depth. The Red Sox signed him, correct? Yeah, triple A depth. If you see him, something went wrong. Okay. And I don't want to listen. I don't want. I don't want to kill the kid. No. I mean, I guess this is how like desperate. Like, you, so the biggest news of the day for the Red Sox <laughs> is uh, Theo Epstein, who doesn't play actually play baseball, and Romy Gonzalez, yeah, a I Triple understand. A depth piece. <laughs> I feel bad because I need some. I need some utility love, and I understand that. But all that what it is is it's you know it's depth. It's just like you know like the kid Luis Arias. You know, it's like let's change. Venues, it's, it, and maybe we could fix something offensively. And, you know, he does bring versatility. Um, we do need something down at AAA, you know, in case something goes, goes wrong, wherever at the big league level, he can move around a little bit. So that's kind of, that's just, that's what that one was. And this is a guy that's claimed off of waivers. He could, you know, they, they could claim somebody else off waivers and he could be gone in a week or two, but it's just depth. Interesting stuff as always from our friend Lou hey, when, Maloney. When are you heading down? Oh, the Lou. 19th. Okay. For like 10 days, got some Ness and EI games, come home for a couple, then go back down for another 10 into that road trip. Have All you right. ever wanted to drive down with the truck just to see what it was like? Or drive no. an RV? No. Yeah, RV, yes. Uh, Ooh. But not, you know, the truck, you know what? I wouldn't mind that. It might be a fun little, a little, little documentary there for a few days. Yeah, kind of video it and little hang out. A couple uh, rest stops here and there down the way, Lou, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, late. there's a lot of gum back there, a lot of seeds. You know what I mean? I can kind of have a nice little heaven. trip on myself. I'm sure there'll be a cooler at some point. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> so much unpacked there. But we got to go because we'll talk to our buddy Lou Merloni next Friday. Lou, thanks a bunch, man. All right, you got it, guys. Thanks, have a buddy. great weekend. There we go.